Tangled Spools, Crazy Temp Towers, and you probably want to make sure you have a nozzle in your printer before printing. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 151. Let's get into it. Hey all welcome back to the channel and welcome back to getting your printers printing with purpose right here with 3D Musketeers and the series Print Fix Friday. If you are dealing with problems with your 3D printer, you can reach out to us by sliding into those DMs or tagging us on any of the social medias, although I mainly watch Twitter and I guess YouTube as well. So if you're trying to get directly to me, use either one of those to get my attention. That's normally the best way. We want to help you get your printers back to running and hilariously, this first fail is one of our printers, but it was given to a friend. We have the AnchorMake M5C, which I recently unboxed and couldn't run because I refuse to use machines that require apps and Wi-Fi and all of that to function. I don't like that. So it went to Amber's brother, Sean, for his birthday. He was asking for a printer. He liked this one. We had discussed this long before I did the unboxing of that machine. He wanted that machine. It was a nice machine for him, and he doesn't care about the data stuff, so it worked out well. But um, Sean has learned the hard way. He's slowly joining the cult of 3D printing, if you will, uh, with a filament knot. So this happens when you have taken the filament off of the spool and then you accidentally let it go and it kind of uncoils some and it accidentally goes underneath itself. You don't notice it until, you know, it gets to this point, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Thankfully, he's pretty new into this spool. I mean, we can see the 800 gram mark is not even hit yet. And so it's good to learn these kind of things early on rather than later on in the process. We don't want someone to make these mistakes when they're 10 years in. We want them to make them early so they hopefully don't make them when they're 10 years in. I'm not gonna say the last time it happened to me because it definitely wasn't just the other day. I said we learn to know better. I didn't say we learn to never do it again. This one's pretty easy though. Obviously your print's likely going to fail, but if you caught it before the print failed, you can quickly go in and change filament. I don't know how to do it on the M5C, but with most 3D printers, you use the screen and command a filament change where it will eject the filament. At that time, you can pull the filament back out of the Bowden tube or whatever you need, untangle it, verify that it's untangled, and then put the filament back in. If you are going to do that, remember to clip the end of the filament. Likely the bit that was inside of the hot end is going to be a bit of a blob. It's not going to look very good. And that can hilariously get clogged when going back into the machine. So you're going to want to make sure that you cut it. Often, most people say to cut it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle. Try different angles. It doesn't have to be perfect. See whatever works best for you. And you should be good. If you didn't catch it in time, and this one looks pretty tight. So I'm not certain if he did catch it in time. But if you didn't catch it in time... Well, hey, at least it didn't waste any more filament. There's that. You will need to check your extruder drive gears if you notice that after changing the filament and fixing it, that if it's not extruding properly, you'll want to check those drive gears to make sure that they're not caked up with filament and are still providing the proper amount of tension on the filament itself. Next up, what temperature should I use? I designed and implemented a fun extruder recently, so I did a temp tower expecting good bridging but the result is kind of awful. I know my 3D printer is very old, so I don't expect it to work on every temperature. Anyway, it looks like it didn't work with any of them. I started at 230C and every step is five degree less. Looking at the results, what temperature do you recommend? I guess 195 is pretty good, but the best bridging is 215. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, I don't recommend any of these. We have a lot, we have a lot more issues here that we have to work on. This looks like, just kind of looking at the frame, it looks like a metal variant of the Anet A8. And I'm a little worried about that because of safety features. But let's assume that this thing is safe because that's about the only thing I can do. It uses an old Mark 10 style extruder with the, <laughs> this is how it used to be back in the day, okay? That heat break right here, this heat break, it actually has a Bowden tube in it. And it's a singular piece of threaded rod with a Bowden tube in it. It's a really, really weird thing. And they often failed very vigorously. And the nozzle was an all metal nozzle, but it was in a PTFE lined hot end. 
it's a little bit weird, and that way the PTFE wouldn't go down into the nozzle because it didn't need to. It looks like we have a cooling issue here. The fan used for cooling does not move enough air. These are the fans that are used to cool hot ends, and they don't move anywhere near enough air. You're looking for not only CFM, so your actual like volume of airflow, but you're looking for static pressure, and these fans are particularly poor at both of them. I believe they're axial fans. They are better for air volume and air flow, but with the fins being as small as they are, you don't get a lot of airflow out of something like this. You'd want to use something like a 5015, a radial fan that has more like a snail shell in it that can push a lot of air and can do it at a reasonably high static pressure at the cost of being a little bit louder. But it's what the bulk of 3D printers that we have used, including the Prusa Mark III's behind me. Now, Prusa did go to a kind of axial, but also radial fan for the Mark IV. I'm personally not a huge fan of it, specifically in the XL, but we are working on a fully custom designed duct to solve that problem. More on that coming, well, when we can. But in this case, we gotta change the cooling because we are clearly not cooling enough. These fans are not appropriate. I would look at replacing it with a 5015. This has a Wanhao Duplicator i3 style extruder. These are like old school direct drive extruders that were really, really good in my opinion for their time. Obviously time has changed since then and they're no longer as good. And traditionally there would be a piece of Delrin here or a nylon standoff that would go between this little heat sink and the fan and they use that extra space which is super cool i like that that's cool to see the other thing you'll want to do is insulate this heat block it's not all that good and traditionally there would be a little bit of fiberglass and some capped on tape um you don't need it but it's better if you have it and you could just go to a silicone sock which i would recommend instead next up a fail from my buddy alex gibson aka the edu maker who said due to my own breathtaking stupidity i need to clean the inside of this e3d revo heater with acetone psa check you actually have a nozzle in before starting a print dummy hashtag 3d printing hashtag fail i can't say that i've done this yet but yeah like this is technically possible with the Revo because they have a spring that holds them to the hot end. And if you're not paying a lot of attention or you have big printers like he does, you might not notice that there's no nozzle in the printer. Something that is really good to do to check is to actually have like a, a lockout tagout system where you cover a button or you cover the power switch when you remove the nozzle. Lockout tagout is used often in industry so that when people are working on, let's say something that is electrical, somebody else doesn't accidentally energize the circuit while your buddy over there is fiddling with it with a screwdriver, therefore letting him ride the lightning when he specifically did not consent to doing so. Yeah, there's no good way to clean this. Acetone is going to be your best bet. Hopefully it doesn't damage anything else. But the nice thing is the heater cores are more affordable than they used to be. So you could just decide, screw it. I don't want to deal with this. I will deal with it later and just simply swap it out. I would personally swap it out immediately so I don't have to deal with it and then fix it later on. I want to get these machines up and running. Uptime is more important than a $40 part or less. I don't know off the top of my head what they cost, but it's not a lot of money. That time that you're going to spend trying to fix this in situ is going to be way more than just doing it later. And the nice thing is you can just put a 12 or 24 volt power into the heater core and it will heat up. It will eventually stop heating up because it is a PTC heater. So you have that benefit of if you do need to heat it up, just plug it into a power supply. You don't have to have it regulated because theoretically these should never go into the hardcore thermal runaway that, well, printers like the previous one that we looked at actually can. I'm going to have you all guess on this one. I want to know in the comments down below what you think caused this failure. I know what caused it, and we're going to show you in the next photo. But we've got two different prints. One that is crazy stringy, looks really nasty, very rough surface finish. And then one that looks pretty darn good, a little stringy, so might be printed a little bit too hot. Uh, it looks like this is Polymaker Starlight filament and yes we do like this polybaker starlight here but i do love 
printed solid filament who is today's filament sponsor who if you do want to win some free filament from printed solid and you are in the continental united states you can fill out that form in the description and if you aren't in the united states well i'll give you a free t-shirt because you know why not? That does come out of our pocket, but hey, we want to be able to reward those who aren't in the United States, you know, to get something that doesn't cost them a dime either. So big thank you to Printed Solid for helping us out in being able to do these filament giveaways and for making awesome filament right here in America with American labor. And they have some beautiful parts like the blue ice that we recently showed off in our video where we made my background look a little bit better. And I'm realizing that I left the curtain open, and I'm not going to fix it now because that would be a continuity error. <laughs> Oops! But yeah, so what happened? Um, somebody had some fun time with their hot end. These are two nozzles. They should be the same size, but I'm assuming they either ran carbon fiber or glow in the dark through it and wallered the entire nozzle out. These are Mark 8 nozzles, and they do have a tendency, especially the cheap ones, to be produced incredibly cheaply and not have a lot of material toward the tip. So when you wear it down, it actually opens up very, very quickly. This is exactly what's going on. So you basically have like a one millimeter nozzle on a 0.4 millimeter hot end. So yeah, you're, you're getting a lot of stringing because you're not retracting enough. You're getting really bad extrusion because you're trying to extrude a lot less than the nozzle diameter actually is. It's not wet filament, it's a bad nozzle. How do you fix it? You replace the nozzle and remember that if you are going to be printing anything that is abrasive, make sure to use a hardened nozzle like an obsidian. You could even use an old school hardened steel nozzle like a nozzle X. You could even go tungsten carbide or my personal favorite, if you feel like you want to ball out the diamondback diamond nozzles, which are effectively indestructible because they're made of diamonds, or at least the tip is. And we're going to be trialing just how indestructible they actually are. So if you want to see me abuse hundreds of dollars of nozzles, get subscribed because not only are we going to do it, we're going to do it live. No. We'll do it live. Next up, a submission from our Patreon Discord, which if you do want to join is at the $10 tier higher via the links in that description. You can come hang out with myself, the entire Musketeers crew, and all of our awesome fans who, uh, well, like to call themselves degenerates. So that's their words, not mine. So let's take a look. So the audio they're using is that hell to the gnaw. And I agree, hell to the nah, because that's not right. Uh, we can see the hot end for the A1 Mini hanging out on the print bed while the filament is just being fed out. This is kind of the same problem that Alex Gibson had earlier in the episode, uh, but same, same, and a little bit different. The entire hot end came out. This is one of those odd things. I've never seen this failure before on an A1 Mini or an A1 in general. If you've had this happen, let me know. I'd be very curious to see if this is a common thing. But this is one of those weird problems that you have when you have parts that are quick swappable. If your quick swap system fails in any way, the whole damn thing just falls out. Now, I haven't seen this happen before, so I'm not going to say, oh, be careful with your bamboo A1 minis, but hey, check it every once in a while just to be safe, right? Same thing with like the Revos. Just make sure they're screwed in all the way just to be safe. It takes five seconds and stops this from happening. On the bright side, it's probably not all that damaged. I think the PEI sheet can handle the extra heat coming from the hot end, touching it directly. But if not, that's going to be a new PEI sheet. The mini's silicone sock is completely missing. So I'd like to see that replaced as well. And you will need to obviously get the little bits of filament that are stuck to that hot end removed before you can reuse it. I don't know if it's possible for this to fail under normal circumstances. It, it might be under high stress for some reason. It might have failed a bed leveling, which is definitely not a foreshadowing for next week's print fix friday but they're obviously printing to me it's a flexi dragon i think it's the mcgybeer dragon to be more specific but yeah um this one is it, it is a little unique I, I certainly haven't seen this type of failure from a bamboo a1 mini or a1 before has this happened to you i'd love to know down below know your thoughts on this one i would say thankfully it failed early so you didn't lose a lot of material you probably lost a fair bit of time but well i mean i guess not you only lost that much filament worth of time so i'm guessing it's probably on layer two or layer three 
I would say this isn't that bad of a failure as far as potential failures for this goes. But we got to make sure that quick swap system is still in place, still functional, and is not going to come out again. I would be apprehensive about running this machine unattended for at least the next few prints just to make sure that things don't rattle loose. Because you don't want this happening on a larger print where the hot end can just fall into and start damaging a mostly printed part, which can then damage the motion system as the printer runs into it and all that. We got lucky here that the printer kind of just kicked it off to the side and didn't actually damage anything but maybe the print bed. But certainly we're getting close to where they'd be burning their wood work surface that they have too. So be careful. I'm, I'm now a little bit cautious about using EVA foam as my top work surface, but we don't have any printers that do this kind of thing. So I don't have to worry too much, but be careful because if this happened to this person, it could happen to you. But again, a huge thank you to Printed Solid for being our filament sponsor for this. And a huge thank you to all of those whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Let me know what you guys think. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Helps the channel grow and doesn't cost you anything to make that happen. Remember, if you want to kick a couple bucks into that creator fund so we can do more fun stuff like adding curtains to my background to make it look less messy. Because that's easier than actually cleaning it. And probably safer for my back, you can do so by clicking those links in that description. That's all we have for you all today. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. You can see 151 episodes deep of looking at your failures and showing you how to fix them. And next that will be the video on, you know, hiding my shame or hiding my addiction. Ooh, that's a good title for that. Anyways, that's all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Screw it. I don't want to deal with this. I will deal with it later. And whoops, hit my microphone.